What's up, guys? I'm Mike D'Antonio, founder and CEO of Stocked Up, and welcome back to the Stocks with Mike and Tom show. We have an amazing episode for you guys here today. There are a lot of important things going on in the stock market right now. There's a lot of important information to watch for this week, and there's just a lot of good opportunities in general. So if you guys are new here, don't forget to subscribe to see our daily stock market watch list every single day on your YouTube homepage. Uh, Feel free to like the video. It really helps us and commenting really helps us. We really, really, really appreciate everyone who's been liking and commenting on the videos lately. The YouTube channel has been exploding and there's a lot of great opportunities in today's video. So make sure you watch to the end. And then at the end of the video, we have a $12 million option that we're going to be going over for this week. So Tom, what happened on the market or in the market on Friday that's uh, pretty important? Yeah, it was very important. On Friday, the Fed warned of an extraordinarily uncertain path to recovery, which is very important for the markets. Just that title alone is going to um, make the markets react to a, in a bearish sentiment to that news. And they declared that the, that the uh, financial system remains under stress because of the coronavirus pandemic. That and the path to recovery is going to be very unsure. And the Fed also said that the nation's GDP would probably contract at a rapid pace in the second quarter after tumbling in the first quarter, which is very important because the GDP, the gross domestic product, that's going to be a big number whenever that comes out for the, for the markets overall and for the economy. Right, exactly. And, you know, the market looks to the Fed kind of as like a, a leadership role. They look for the Fed for guidance. They, they just look to the Fed for a lot of important economic data and projections and all that. And the Fed basically said exactly what the market did not want to hear. The market hates to hear that the market is uncertain. It hates that. Um, I mean, what the Fed said on Friday, um, extra extraordinarily uncertain path to recovery, that is probably the worst thing they could have said besides the market is crashing, in my opinion. And, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> I mean, seriously, I mean, I think Fed Chair Powell has a short position or something because the way he's talking in these meetings and, and on Friday, like he, like, honestly, why would he say something like this? Extraordinarily uncertain path to recovery. He knows that's exactly what the market does not want to hear, you know? So I don't know what to think about Powell right now, but I just have like a hunch that he has a short position just based off what he's saying or, you know, whatever. But he also, you know, he's also going to be testifying uh, on Tuesday and Wednesday this week. Right, Tom? Yeah, he's going to be testifying on Tuesday and Wednesday, and investors are really going to be on the lookout for, uh, for more clarity on their bond buying and lending programs, because obviously that's what's been pumping up the market lately, too. Yeah, I mean, on, what was it, Tuesday or Wednesday of this past week, uh, they made like a, uh, a rate decision, and then that ended up screwing up the markets, um, and that's kind of one reason why the markets fell so much on Thursday, so you know, keep that in mind. He is going to be testifying and that's just going to give him more opportunity to say potentially bad things. So keep that in mind. If anything right now, I feel kind of bearish about this. Um, just based off the way uh, Powell is talking lately, he's not in a pumping mood, I could say. Like, he, he, like, if he was trying to pump the markets right now, I promise you he would not be saying extraordinarily uncertain path to recovery. And that's just one quote, you know? Like, yeah, he's, and he's kind of been having beef with the president also. Like, yeah, he really he's been like, tweeting at him, telling he's been saying the Fed is terrible and all this stuff. Like, it's kind of funny. And then now now Powell comes out and says, the market's extremely uncertain. So it's, right. it's kind of funny. <laughs> right. I mean, like, yeah. I mean, that's like one of the worst things Powell could have said, in my opinion. So I don't know what to think about that, but... The only thing, in my opinion, that can stop the market from going down is either Trump pumping it up or the Fed's pumping it in a sense of, you know, like with their their injections, you know what I mean? So yeah, um, or even a real vaccine for the virus. Or a real vaccine. Right. That that's a good good insight too. I mean, but I know that takes a long time to get developed. I know that And that would be a big uh it it's just gonna be probably a big surprise whenever that comes out because it's just gonna be something where a clinical trial finally had success or something right right but like other than that uh with the factors of powell beefing with trump and saying these like quotes that will deliberately make the market fall 
I think the combination of all everything with Powell plus the market recovering so fast, like the market literally went from here, the Dow went from, let's see, went from about about 18,000 to about 28,000 in like three months, you know? So that was a very, very fast recovery. So I think we just recovered too quick and with Powell beefing with everything. And then on top of that, another uh, potential Corona wave breaking out. I think we see a lot of downside with the markets. You know? Yeah, and I really like how we have, uh, how we had this map up here. If we pull up this map of the coronavirus cases right here, you can see worldwide, Mike was pointing this out to me earlier, that these cases just keep rising. And you can see that um, lately they're all, they're all the way up to like 138,000 worldwide cases in one day, which is pretty big number. Yeah, I mean, we're setting record new numbers of cases, you know, and everything's starting to open back up. So like, it's just, I don't know, like, it's just, it's not a good sign. So you know, with that being said, with all the variables and all the information being said, personally, I'm pretty bearish on the market right now. The only thing that could stop that as of how it stands right now is either a vaccine, Trump trying to pump it, which even if he does with, I, I feel like the other factors would just like overbear it and make the market fall, you know, with Powell, uh, recover, uh, the market recovering too fast and the other uh, Corona wave breaking out or like a Fed pump, you know, so keep that in mind. So it's just something to think about. But like, here's the thing, we did fall in the market 1800 points on Thursday, right? And yesterday, the market was up about 500 points. Like, honestly, we had such a big fall in the market on Thursday, we might see another green day tomorrow. You know, just because I'm bearish on the market right now, that doesn't mean the market's going to tank 5000 points tomorrow. Like we might see another green day, we might see futures up today. But like, as of how it stands from right now, for the next two weeks, I think we are bearish on the market. That's how I feel. Um, but I, I, I do feel like we are going to have a fall this week. Yeah, I totally agree. Oh, yeah. We'll see what happens. Um, but now we're going to talk about the momentum plays for this week. So we only have three stocks for you guys today. Um, the market was pretty choppy on Friday. So we're going to have to play these ones by ear, but they're looking pretty good in uh, after hours right now. And I'm liking that last candle on Tesla right now, Tom. The last yeah, that's a nice little candle down <laughs> in after hours. That looks kind of like it just bled off there right below yeah. those technicals too. Yeah. So the first momentum play is Tesla. And we're looking at this to the downside. So basically guys, we are just looking for Tesla to continue down if and only if it can break this support level that Tom is about to say. So we're $912. 912. So if Tesla breaks below 912, we will be, we will be looking at this in a bearish sense, okay? Uh, only if it breaks below 912. Uh, next, we have Netflix. Yeah. What are we looking at? Watch for Netflix to break one, um, 412.50. 412.50. So if it breaks below 412.50, we'll be looking at it in a bearish sense. And then the last one, we have Apple. Yep, Apple, watch for them to break below 334 on the dot. Yep, 334, if it breaks below that, we'll be looking at it in a bearish sense. So uh, the market was, it was technically up on Friday, up technically 500 points. It was just like a little rebound. Uh, it was kind of shaky throughout the day. It did break lows of yesterday, but I do, I do feel pretty bearish. So now we're going to be talking about the unusual options activity for this week. And this one's pretty big. So the first thing is it's on Apple, which is a good sign because of that all time highs and the market overall is kind of dragging it down a little bit. But we are looking at the Apple 335 strike puts that expire this week, June 19. And someone put about $11.8 million into this put position. So it's a huge position. Um, it's close to the money. The market overall is pretty bearish. I think there's a decent chance that whoever is trading this can be longing these puts, meaning that they think Apple's going to go down. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, I definitely think that. I love the way how it's starting to bleed off on the chart. And especially with the second coronavirus wave coming, this is kind of insane, guys. Like they've, they've been talking about a second wave since the beginning, so they've kind of been gearing up for it. And now what, if the news starts it's reporting a whole bunch of articles on it and stuff that's definitely going to get a lot more exposure to investors and then that then the market will come down because of that and apple will definitely be one that suffers because they ended up recovering 
well over like over a hundred percent or I mean 50 percent well over 60 percent so that that's really good a 65 percent recovery on on Apple ever since the coronavirus and they never even really fell that much to begin with so yeah. it's just been a good play with Apple um, overall in, in the market either way yeah yep yeah. so that's interesting but you know if Apple like futures did not open up yet like there's still about like five or six hours until futures open so like if futures open down or whatever, like let's say, like it, it doesn't really matter how futures open, but if in the morning, like Apple has downwards momentum, I might pick up a couple of these puts, you know, because there's a lot of money going into them. They're close to the money. And I think this could be a good trade if and only if Apple has downwards momentum. If we see like a green day in the market on you know tomorrow, then I will not be picking these up. So it's only if the market's kind of bleeding. So yeah, um, now we're gonna answer your guys' questions from the previous episode. So we have uh, Gupta saying hit the Microsoft jackpot today. So how did uh, Microsoft do on, what was that? I think, yeah, I think it was Thursday. So yeah, Microsoft really bled and we, uh, we called that out as a day trade. So that's awesome. Um, let's see. So we have Christopher saying, Tom mentioned long-term picks he was watching. Do you present long-term picks? Would that be in stat modeling? Common sense would say not in day trading. So Tom, I'll let you take this one. Yeah, I actually um, call all those out in the stock mastery chat. And stock mastery is totally different from stat modeling. But stock mastery includes every single course we have, which is two stock courses, one options course. And then it also includes the algo that we have on TradingView, which is a custom indicator that Mike made all on his own. And it took him a long time to code it. And it's really good. I really like it. And we both use it every single day. Um, but that, that's where I'll call that out is in stock mastery chat. And that I call out all of my long-term positions in there. So, um, I was up big on Leggett and Platt. I called that out in there. I called us steel out in there, which went up 25%. And then I also called out, um, AT&T, which ended up popping about 20%. So there's some good call outs in there, but, um, right now the call outs aren't coming too much because I'm waiting for the market to fall, but, um, I'll definitely be calling them out in there very shortly. Once I, uh, think the market falls to uh, a good enough level for us. Yeah, exactly. So awesome, awesome question, Christopher. Yeah, stat modeling and stock mastery are totally different. Stock mastery is pretty much uh, all the courses except for stat modeling and long-term picks are definitely included in there. If you want to learn more about stock mastery, the link is in the description down below. Uh, but now we have, we have Mill saying, I'm also enjoying a free annual membership to stat modeling after today's picks. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, with the next question we have, let's see, uh, we have uh, Fancy Pants saying, also you have another 5% to fall to a former breakout area to test. Let's see. So let's take a look at the market overall, Tom. Yeah. Um, let's see. I mean, yeah, I mean, there, there's definitely a lot of room for the market to fall. Um, and I think, we're, I think we are going to see a fall this week for sure. Yeah, and my, my next testing point, uh, I was saying around 2,800 on the S&P 500. So um, that's my that's where I'm looking for the for the S and P 500 to end up falling to is some somewhere around like 2800 2900 levels. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we have direct saying a large portion of the stocks to watch are Dow stocks. I'm thinking of buying puts on the Dow if the implied volatility isn't too crazy. Loving the channel. So yeah, I mean, thank you for that comment. And yeah, I mean, you could definitely short Dow stocks. I mean, they are gonna be some of the powerhouses so i wouldn't say they're gonna be the easiest shorts but like I, I personally like things like if you look at like starbucks like they're falling because one uh the market overall is falling yes they are, they are a, a big stock but they also have a fundamental reason to fall because they are closing stores so like they have yeah that i just saw that news that's huge news starbucks was closing like a thousand plus stores wasn't it yeah, it's crazy <laughs> Uh, yeah, I didn't think that they would end up closing that because really I thought they stayed open during the virus and everything too, didn't they? Uh, yeah, I yeah, I stopped there a couple times. They were pretty busy too. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe it. Yeah, uh, we have Whitney saying, do you guys ever give clues to how you're going to play the market overall in Discord? Would love to hear the idea about buying a hedge. Definitely would have done that. You guys rock. So thank you so much, uh, Whitney. Uh, we pretty much tell everyone how we're playing the market overall uh, just in these videos. Like, uh, we say exactly what we're going to do. And then like everything we we're talking about today is what we're going to do tomorrow. If we do hedge, we uh, always say like uh, specifically like we're going to hedge, but I haven't hedged lately. I don't, Tom, you haven't hedged, right? 
Uh, she might be referring to how I, I that one day on the uh, on the SPY, whenever it fell big on that Thursday, at the end of the day, I figured we'd have an after hours movement up. So I, I bought a call at the end of the day and hedged. And I think that's what she was. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. So yeah. So yeah, keep that in mind. Um, yeah, awesome question. Uh, we have Chris saying, hi, all. Enjoying the content, Mike and Tom. Question for all. When buying a put option, do you generally buy market or limit? Sometimes get carried away with saving a few pennies on the initial option cost and miss out on the, mom on the momentum by always changing my limit prices. Our market buys and sells the way to go. Thanks. Well, awesome question. First of all, I feel like a lot of people have that question. So thank you for asking that. Uh, personally, I buy limits. Um, it really depends on what you're doing. Like if you're doing a day trade, sometimes you have to buy a, a market order to, to catch the momentum. Um, but you could always just set like a high limit order. So like, for example, like personally, like, I always recommend just setting limit orders, even if you go higher than the current price. Like, let's say, for example, you want to get in an option fast, right? And let's say the option's at $150 and you want to get in fast. You could just set your limit at like 160 or 165. And, you know, at the same time, you are going to be paying more, but you're still going to be limiting yourself because a market order can fill you at like 190. So, yeah, and I mean, I just had it happen to me on Friday whenever I bought an SPY uh, call. I, I bought really quickly, and I, uh, I mean a put. I bought an SPY put, and, you know, I just rode that momentum down and bought a, uh, bought a market order, and, you know, I ended up being out of the, you know, I ended up losing 20 bucks, like, right away, but, it, you know, as long as you're riding that momentum downward, sometimes it still goes in your favor, and I still ended up winning on it. Yeah, so another thing to keep in mind is, like, if the option is liquid, you should be fine, but when you're playing, when you're playing with illiquid yeah. options, you can really, really get screwed over. Yeah, yeah, sometimes there might even be like a $50 gap between those things. Or more, honestly. Like sometimes I was playing with some uh, deep in the money options that were illiquid and I didn't set a limit order and I got screwed over pretty bad. Like, like it was literally like a, a $300 spread and I, I <laughs> kind of got screwed. But Oh, wow. That's a huge spread. Wow. Yeah, I think it was like McDonald's ones. But yeah, um, we have, let's see. Uh, let's see. We have next question. We have um, a bell saying, Mike, I subscribed a few days ago and I'm a newbie and I profited off the w WFC puts this morning. I've also learned a lot from the Discord stat modeling chat. So absolutely. Thank you for that. And then we have Danya saying, thanks, Mike and Tom. You guys have been great. When you tell us to exit a play, does that mean just sell at the running price for the contracts we have? Um, yes. Uh, you could sell whenever, but when we say, when we get out, uh, if you want to follow us, you would want to get out uh, then too. Um, we have, we have, let's see, we have Chris saying for the newer traders or traders who keep 2000 to $5,000 in their account, how do you guys recommend position sizing for the day trades and stat modeling? I'm a bit conservative. How do you feel about position size? So this is an amazing question and I'm sure a lot of you stat modeling people have been hear me talk lately about not over leveraging. So like Tom, can you pull up a chart on like SPY or, or something like that? Um, but the biggest thing right now is, you know, especially in this volatile market, generally I would recommend maybe like 10% of your account, uh, maybe 10% stat modeling, 10% day trades. That's just a, a general recommendation. Um, some people are gonna wanna go higher, some people are, are gonna wanna go lower, but it all depends. Like honestly, the more risky you are, uh, the more percentage you could put in your account. But I'm also a very, very conservative trader and I would rather, um, you know, make a little than, than potentially blow the entire account just on one trade. So, uh, yeah, and I'm the same way. Like I'm really conservative and most stat modeling plays and stuff. I'm only getting like, you know, two to five contracts of most of those. And some of the members, I saw a member the other day get 70 contracts. So, you know, some guys just like to go all out on them. And if you do, I mean, that's just a risk that, um, every once in a while, you know, that risk may end up coming back to bite you. So, yeah, I mean, I personally get a little more, but like, it, it all depends on your account, but definitely like you don't want to over leverage. That's the biggest thing. Like, like honestly, whether you have a thousand dollar account or you're trading with $200,000, that doesn't matter. It, it all comes down to percentages. So the, the higher percentage you put in, the more risky you are. Um, then we have, let's see. Uh, we have Hunter saying, awesome video, guys. The daily chart looks pretty funny with the straight drop. Hopefully some more downside to the market soon so I can get some long-term holds cheaper. Absolutely. 
Thank you so much for that amazing comment, Hunter. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, if the market does fall, it would definitely provide a lot of opportunity for us traders. Uh, one with obviously put options, but also to after the market falls, you can sell um, out of the money put credit spreads or sell out of the money puts. And then on top of that, you can also get up some uh, great long-term holds. So there's definitely a lot of opportunity if the market does fall. Uh, let's see. We have Chris saying, I'm hoping for a down Friday, down Monday. So yeah, I mean, we had like a down Friday in the sense of open to close, but from Thursday's close to Friday's close, we are green. So yeah, I mean, it would be nice to see a down Monday. We, the futures didn't open up yet. So we will see what happens. Um, let's see. We have Augie saying, hi, I'm very new to your channel, but I just want to say thank you for the super helpful content. I just had a question on the six stocks you mentioned to look out for tomorrow. I know you specified with the Apple stock that the call price and the date to look out for. For the other five tickers you mentioned, are these all short-term swing and or day trades or long-term plays? Thank you. So the momentum plays are intended to be day trades. Like Tom, if you want to pull up a couple of the momentum plays, uh, they're all intended to be day trades. You can swing them, however. Like for example, if Tesla, like we're looking at Tesla, to break, um, you know, level, just let's just say for like simple math, uh, like 910, let's just say for simple, simple references, 910, right? If it breaks 910, if it breaks below that, uh, technically the strategy is for a quick day trade, but if you want to hold it, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, then we have Israel saying, hell yeah, absolutely. And we have Danya saying, how do you go about exiting a call or put when you see things going bad if the contract was bought that day? Well, it depends. So all the trades that we get in, we all have a plan before um, it happens. But like, for example, like if I feel bearish about the market, right? Like if I feel bearish about the market um, and I buy put at open and, and the market starts to go up, I'm not going to sell out of that because if I feel bearish about the market for one to two weeks, I'm, I'm going to, I know there's going to be a lot of volatility in between that. So like a lot of it comes down to experience, but um, you have to like kind of like juggle between a fine line of cutting losses quickly, but also, you know, having the like courage to stay in a losing position and letting it play out, you know? So like there, there's really no like set way. Um, so then we have, let's see, we have Phil saying, hi, Mike and Tom, loving this channel. I'm newly joining the stat modeling and I think it's fantastic. What are your thoughts on the VIX? Um, so with the VIX, I feel really good about it. Um, with the market overall falling, the VIX would really benefit. So um, as you can see on Tom's chart, the last time the, the market fell, like back in like February and March, the VIX exploded, like exploded. So 400%. Yeah. So if the market does fall, the risk reward ratio here is unreal. So there's like for the risk rewards amazing plus with the overall factors we listed in the beginning of this video with the feds and the Corona cases and all of that and the market being overextended in general. And then, um, you know, Fed Powell beefing with Trump and all that. I think there's a high probability of this working out, but at the same time, um, I never get too emotionally attached with one trade. Like I'm not going to bed at night hoping the VIX is going to shoot up. If it does, amazing. You know, it's going to be a great payday. If it doesn't, then you know what? Oh, well, and move on to the next trade. So um, as much as I love the trade, I'm not emotionally attached to it. And that's just kind of how you be with, it's kind of how you have to be with trading. But to end it, I do feel very good about the VIX. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. We have, uh, we have Ronnie saying, great content, guys. That Microsoft day trade was super sketch, but I kept faith and it paid off. I'm convinced that you guys live in the future. <laughs> Great work, guys. I owe you guys. <laughs> he goes, I owe you guys at least two kisses. LOL, just kidding. <laughs> well, <laughs> thank you for the comment. But uh, yeah, I mean, last week was, we were pretty spot on, Tom. I mean, uh, we, we called the, the tech run up in the middle, in the beginning of the week with Microsoft, Facebook, Apple. Like we were pretty spot on with that. And then we literally called the top last week in a sense that, you know, you sold your positions like literally right at the top. Yeah, and, I sold them right here. <laughs> and then, and then uh, the, the big drop Thursday, and then we called the pullback on, on Friday and Thursday's video. So I don't know, you know, so thank you for that.
but uh, we, we are pretty excited with the market overall right now. And there is still a ton of opportunity. Um, so next question we have, let's see, we have, uh, we have fancy pants saying, how did you guys learn what you have learned? My son is 17 and I want him to learn this. So, um, I just want to say I've been literally studying the stock market every second of, you know, the pa every, for, like, every second for the past four years. Like, um, I've been doing this for like, I, I, I just dedicated so much time to it. But if your son does want to learn, I would definitely recommend our stock mastery program. It's pretty much um, meant to take someone who doesn't know anything about the market to teach, eventually teach them about the options market. It includes the uh, stocked up stock course, options course, a couple of our algorithms, and just um, long-term picks in general and stuff. So I would definitely recommend that. I started trading when I was like 14 or 15 years old. So um you know, I think it's great to start young and it's, uh, it's, it's amazing, you know, so keep that in mind. And there's a lot of opportunity in the stock market right now. If the market does crash, I feel like it could be a perfect time for your son to get in because pretty much everything will be going up. If the, like, after, like by the time he learns everything and he's ready to go, I mean, I think it'd be a really good market. Uh, let's see. We have Mac saying excellent analysis. I like the both sides of the plays guys. I'll be looking for puts on the bounce and calls immediate term. Right now, I'm about to get my account stocked up. Let's go. Uh, we have Jacob saying, don't forget, hedge with SPXU goes up when SPY goes down. Yep, that's right. You could also hedge with VIX or TVIX or anything like that. Uh, let's see. Um, we have, let me see. Uh, next question, we have, we have uh, David saying, crazy day, guys. This is the first time I executed two plays back to back perfectly. I rode this file all the way down and then rode it all the way up close to the day. It was perfect. I also bought some more calls for spy on Monday. Awesome job. So yeah, I mean, we'll have to see what, uh, what happens on Monday. Um, I think futures might give us a little indication about what's to come. Futures did not open yet, but like even if futures open green, you know, we had such a big fall on Thursday and, um, really with this market, we are heavily driven by catalysts, like with Powell and Trump and, you know, the Corona cases. So, um, I, I, like I said, I do feel bearish for the market for the next one to two weeks, I would say, but, um, you know, I think futures can give us just a little hint of about what's to come. Um, so Tom, with that being said, do you have any last minute stocks, options, anything for today? No, I think that just about does it, but I'm definitely going to be watching that the um, the Fed and Jerome Powell this week. I'm definitely going to be watching for his uh, his test him testifying in front of Congress and definitely waiting to see uh, if they've done anything different with the bonds or anything with the markets. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys learned something or going to be following one of the plays we listed, we would really, really, really appreciate it if you could hit that like button and comment. The YouTube channel has been exploding lately, and we're just so grateful for all you guys, especially all of you who uh, like, comment, and subscribe. It really, really means a lot. And if you guys want to see our daily stock market watch list every single day on your YouTube homepage, don't forget to subscribe. And if you guys want to be one of the first people to see the uh, YouTube watch list, don't forget to turn notifications on for uh, subscribing to our channel. Right when we post a video, you will be the first one to know about it. Also, if you want to trade the same options that Tom and I trade, Every single day, uh, check out these stocked up options alerts. The link is in the description down below. I did a complete recap of all the wins and all the losses on um, what we traded. We did all of that on, uh, we posted the video yesterday. We had no losses yesterday. Uh, you know, we, we do lose sometimes, you know, there's no, no trader wins every time, but uh, historically we have a 90% win rate. Uh, all the wins, all the losses are posted publicly on YouTube. So if you guys want to check that out, feel free. It's the Stocked Up Options Alerts link in the description down below. Other than that, thanks for watching.